Welcome to this week's edition of Cyclone Insiders. Alongside Jake Stevens and Alex Kraut, I'm Alan Fidelke. So this past week, guys, Iowa State hosted the high-octane, sixth-ranked Baylor Bears, and as we kind of thought, it probably wasn't going to go Iowa State's way, um, and, we did, and it didn't. You know, I, Iowa State lost 28-49. to So right away, we're going to jump into action. The first quarter, first drive, Baylor gets the ball. Iowa State forces a three-and-out. Jake, what, what were your thoughts with Iowa State forcing a three-and-out the first possession of the game? I thought it was huge. For about the only part in the game, I think it was the only time Iowa State had momentum. Mm -hmm. Jack Trice was rocking. It was loud. I was on the sidelines. I couldn't even hear the person standing next to me. I couldn't even hear him talking. They could only really send a message to go up 7 nothing, or even a field goal 3 nothing. Mm -hmm. but they just couldn't capitalize. Well, I mean, what were your thoughts, Alex? I mean, I agree with Jake. It's, it's always loud in Jack Trice Stadium right away, but uh, just this Baylor offense is just so so dangerous and can strike so fast. What, what, what were your thoughts on that first three and out Iowa State forced? I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously that was really ideal for us to come up big there right away. Jack Trice always been good lately for us. Fans have been awesome. And then just, it was a great start to the game for us. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was, you know, huge momentum. I'm like, wow, Iowa State might actually take a lead, hopefully. And if, if you look back at the stats for Baylor, the last three games, that they played before Iowa State. They had 13 total drives in the first quarter and only punted two times. So, and that was their four, first uh, three and out. And Iowa State, you know, was, you know, held accountable for that, which yeah. was really good. So, and then next, you know, we kind of fast forward and then Baylor goes up 14 in the first quarter, guys. And ISU answers by forcing a three and out and then going 92 yards for a score. Thoughts on the 92 yard drive that Iowa State's not really known for, Jake? I thought I was kind of relieving. Yeah. Like you said, if Baylor has a high-powered offense, they can score out well. They go up 14, we answer right back. Iowa State answers right back, 14-7. It's kind of relieving. Yeah. I, it, 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 sorry. No, it you're fine. Could have had some fight in them. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was, it, it was good because Baylor's up 14-0. It could get out of hand, and Iowa State forces a three and out. And, that, and, that, and that's big. And then Iowa State goes 92 yards, which they're not known for in the past. And if you look at it, this past year, they went 92 yards for a touchdown against Iowa. And then they went 85 yards and 75 yards against K-State. And then they also went 75 yards against NDSU. So what, they, you know, what they've been struggling in the past, they've actually been able to do this year, which is you know, pretty big. And despite being um, one and three, one of the good things Iowa State is doing well this season is being able to put together those big drives. So, Alex, what, what did you think of that 92-yard drive after forcing a three and out? I mean, clearly the most concerning thing with Baylor is their offense. So for us to have a drive like that against their defense, which is obviously almost That front four impressive. is really good, yeah. They're probably all impressive. NFL ready. So. Right, so to get that, that drive early and just have momentum and just we're looking good. You know, our offensive play calls were looking good. Man, Gino's been great for us and just really an impressive drive out of us. So right away, we, we, uh, Iowa State scores that, that touchdown and make it 14-0. So after the first quarter, Iowa State is only down down seven. So Iowa State is in it, guys. Baylor has outscored their last three opponents 73 to nothing in the first quarter. So it's, it's almost, the game's almost over against your other opponents. After, at halftime, it's clearly over the last three games. So... And I would say it was also leading time of possession by two, you know, two minutes. It's, you know, not much to say in the first quarter, but it's still pretty, you know, pretty big thing for Iowa State. And they also held Baylor 0-3 on third downs. So what were your guys' overall thoughts on the first quarter for Iowa State? For me, I think it was somewhat of a win because they were down only seven. And Baylor's previous drive, they just held them to another three and out. Mm -hmm. So it was up to them to tie it up and to change the game, 14-14. But... Iowa State couldn't pull it off. Yep. Yeah, you really got to consider that a win at the end of the first quarter. For sure, for sure. Down seven, we're not supposed to be in a game like this. Yeah. Especially with how quick they come out the gate to be down seven at the end of the first quarter. Huge. You might not have momentum at that point, but you're, you're sitting there, your team's thinking, yep. we got a chance. I mean, they kind of did have momentum. If you look at it, they went in, the, you know, after the first quarter, they still had the ball. And they were marching. They were getting close to, ha you know, to midfield. And then... I mean, we all probably did that, you know, face palm slap, that, that interception Sam threw. It was, to say it was stupid was an understatement, if you ask me. And I thought it was almost like a momentum swinger. Uh, Alex, would you think that that INT Sam threw, you know, pretty close to midfield, only down seven was a pretty big momentum swinger that resulted in a touchdown by Baylor? He threw it left-handed. Yeah. It was a left-handed. I've never seen that before. No. A starting quarterback just threw a left-handed interception, and it was just a throw-up. It wasn't even, it was a toss-up. He didn't have, no one was open. It was yep. just, he 
he should have just gone down and taken the sack. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you I mean you got to take that. Paul Rhodes said Monday at the press conference they had a little chit chat at you know on the sideline. He, he's like, that was stupid. Don't do it again. And, he, and you know, Sam didn't even try to say that um, he was just trying to throw it away. He actually tried to complete that pass left-handed like a shovel pass. So I, you know, and it was just after Sam scrambled for a 12-yard, you know, 12-yard yarn for a first down. The crowd was in it, possibly, hopefully, going down to get some points. Whether it was three or seven, cut that 14 to seven lead in half, you know, or excuse me, cut that 14-7 lead just in general, and then they just, they, they couldn't, you know, I, I, I agree, he should have just taken that sack, but instead they make it 21-7, you know, Jake, what did you think about that, you know, that left-handed throw, and he didn't, he, he didn't even was trying to throw it away? It was pretty pitiful, if you ask yeah. me. I mean, I know, honestly, like any interception in any game, for the most part, is a, is a momentum swing, Yep. and plus, against a team like Baylor, you can't really give them any takeaways like that, when they can score in two plays. Yeah. So, you know, it's 21-7. We're going, you know, into halftime, and it's it's 35-7. You know, most people think that the game's over. What did you guys think, you know, not only in the second quarter, but in the first half, whether it was on the Iowa State side or on the Baylor side? We'll start, we'll start with you, Alex. Uh, the one thing that I didn't like the most out of the first half was, go back to the first quarter real quick, we ran that draw on third and 11. We ran a draw to Aaron Wimberley on third and 11. Mm -hmm. at, right after we had gotten a three and out out of the Baylor offense. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. And that was a bad play call. But other than that, I thought Mangina was great. But going into halftime, it just, we were just running out of gas. Yeah, I, I didn't like that play call. That seemed like they were a little you know, conservative, um, if, if you ask me, and if you ask any Iowa State fans. You know, that third and 11, you heard some boos in the crowd. Um, I was there, Jake was there. Yeah, was I'm, there. Assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you were there too. But what, what were your thoughts, Jake, on, you know, now you know on the second quarter or in the first half as well e either side Baylor or Iowa State well the second quarter for Iowa State they just couldn't move the ball I don't think they got one first down the whole quarter I don't believe maybe one I, I don't think 50 total yards if that yeah it was it was pretty pitiful on Iowa State in the second quarter that's where they kind of fell behind that's where you see it that interception by TJ Mutchardson second you know second one of the season second one you know in, in a consecutive game and then Iowa State goes three and out to keep them at 21-7. So that was kind of, you know, they had momentum with that interception, but then it just kind of, the Iowa State stalls at Baylor's 43 and punts. I think in that situation, if I'm Paul Rhodes, because he says he has final say if they go for it on fourth down. I think they needed to go for it there. Um, you have to go for it, because at that point, if you look at Iowa State's drives at that point, they had four three and outs, that interception by Sam, and then their one touchdown. In the six drives, they've had it to that point. They've had no offense going except for that one touchdown drive. So I think they, he had to go for it, and they didn't because you gotta you gotta take big risks to, yeah. to try to upset a big team like that. Also, I thought they had a lot of missed tackles, especially in the second quarter. And first half, Baylor only ran 20 plays in the first quarter, but in the second quarter they ran 36. So you know, obviously, as everyone knows, the more plays you're able to run, the more chances you have at scoring. And then also Baylor was able to gain 100 yards on the ground in the second quarter compared to just 35 in the first. And then the last thing, after going 0 for 3 on, uh, in the first quarter on third downs for Baylor, uh, they went 5 of 7 in the second. So something to be able to kind of control the momentum, which is making third down stops, Iowa State couldn't do that. So that, that's why I thought Baylor was able to get rolling in the second. And then Iowa State, on their third down conversion, they were 2, and f two for 5 on the first quarter, which is, bit, which is pretty good for Iowa State when they're not known for being able to get those third down conversions. But then they go 0 for 4 in the second quarter. So that was kind of a big... A couple of those were kind of big momentum changers, especially in the second quarter, and that's why I thought Iowa State fell behind in the half. So we, we fast forward to the third quarter. Iowa State comes out, they score 35 to 14, and then they onside kick it. Did you like that onside kick, Alex? I didn't like it, but at, okay. that, at that point, you got to take more chances early on in the game. Exactly. You have to. Uh, as far as like the fourth and one you were talking about, we had already made way too many mistakes in this game to had a chance. Our first quarter, we were looking okay, but at the end of the second quarter, we didn't take our chances, and then to give an onside kick like that and then not get it, it's you're basically done at that point. Yeah. That, that made me think about Iowa State in 2011 against Okie State. We were probably all there, or probably watching it when Iowa State was down 24 to 14 against Okie State, and they, get, they do an onside kick. At that point, I didn't like it because they were only down 10, and it was just the start of the third quarter, kind of like this game. But Sam, you know, he just came off a nice CD run to make it 35 to 14, and, um, or excuse me, um, after that touchdown, I thought they had to do it because, like I said, Sam came off, you know, the touchdown run, and then um, right out of halftime, and, and they couldn't do much in the first half, especially in that second quarter. So I thought it was a good call. 
Um, it just was unfortunate they couldn't convert because, you know, Baylor then went down the field and scored. So, Jake, did you like that onside kick? I said yes. Alex said no. Which way are you tipping? I think it was a good call. You yeah. thought it was a good call? Okay. I thought it was necessary because yeah. it's like you said, they couldn't stop on offense. Like, they proved that. The Coach Rhodes had little to no faith in his defense, obviously. Yeah. So, I, I, I felt like it was a necessary call. Speaking of unnecessary call, I thought B Baylor was fourth and one on their own 41. They're up 42 to 21. Oh, the game's almost out of reach, and they go for it. Did you guys, we'll start with you, Jake, did you like that call by Art Bryles? Fourth and one on your own 41, up 21 points, and you go for it. Did, I mean, you, did you like that call? They, they were actually at, uh, excuse me, Iowa State's 41. Did you like that call? Because that would have been about a, uh, about a you had 18 yards, that would have been about a 50, 59-yard field goal. Yeah, I mean, it's always, always a personal preference, but I, I like it, but I don't think it was necessary. You don't think it was necessary? What do you think, Alex? It's definitely not necessary, but as a means of the game's essentially over, a lot, a lot of offenses, whether NFL or college, are just deciding to go for that fourth and one real quick to get mm -hmm. the clock moving. So as a means of that, I don't think it was a you know, to extend the game, to score more points, run the score up. That's not what he meant to do. He just wanted to get the clock running. I, go ahead. I also, like, actually on the Baylor sideline, I was on the Baylor sideline. Yeah. Then I, I heard the co several coaches stressing, no mercy, no mercy. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. They just don't want to let up. Yeah. So they, well, I mean, people, people think that field goal might have been out of range for the kicker, which, you know, Chris Callian, he was only one for five on the season heading into that game and his one make that he had on the season being under 30 yards so you know it was only one yard and Baylor was having their way offensively but you know I got thinking they could have just punted it away you know pinned Iowa State deep but you know I, I kind of thought I agree with Jake I thought they really just wanted to blow it up and blow this game out of proportion which it kind of did towards the end but and you kind of saw it on the last drive but let's just fast forward to the last quarter real quick guys Iowa State's down you know, 49 to 21, and then Iowa State, you know, excuse me, Iowa State outscores Baylor 7 0, um, you know, to, for the final score of 49 to 28. Did you guys like that Art Riles kept trying to score right there as a, t uh, you know, the game was clearly over. It was under two minutes, essentially, yeah. and they were at Iowa State's like 25, 30 yard line, and he kept running it. Kept running it, running it instead of kneeling it. You know, the game was out of reach. I don't know if Art Riles had the bet for the over under or something, but did you guys like that? He kept. He kept running it instead of just taking the kneel, taking the victory, because he could have risked someone getting injured. Yeah, I mean, but by that point, I, it was, they should have just kneeled it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 49, 20, you're up 21, under a couple minutes yeah, left, and, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid if you ask me. I thought he just really wanted to tack it on and send a message to the nation that they're not someone to mess with. Alex, I mean, what, what did you think? Did you stick around for the whole game? Uh, no, I did not. No? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I do understand, we don't really know how this college playoff is going to work yet, and obviously Baylor is going to be right in the mix with Oklahoma as far as winning the Big 12. So to that extent, teams are going to run the score up. And yeah. if you were hearing that no mercy on the sidelines, yeah. at that point, I do understand that as far as, I mean, they didn't cover the spread. That's still a huge win for Baylor as yep. far as score-wise. They still won by 20 points, over 20 points. But as a means of that, we don't know how the college playoffs is going to work yet, so I understand. Exactly, just like you. They, they don't know. I mean, they're going to be up there with Oklahoma right. at, at, towards the end of the season. Who's going to get that bid? I mean, there's you know five really essential conferences that could really make it to the playoffs. Someone's going to get shorted. And, you know, it, it seems with Iowa State, or excuse me, not with Iowa State, with the Big 12, they don't have a, you know, a Big 12 championship. So it, it's almost like who looked the best? You know, and I think Baylor won as one as much as they could against Iowa State right. before Oklahoma comes to Iowa State. So they can kind of compare and say, hey, we beat Iowa State more, you know, than Oklahoma did, or it's, they say it, uh, you know, on a, against a different game. But what were you going to touch on with that? Well, I also like... I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I won't say I'm willing to bet, but it looked like they were trying to score again. Yeah, but then absolutely. They got, but then they got that false start penalty. And then they kind of just, took but, back. It, but instead of taking a knee, they, they, they ran it. You yeah, know, you get that yeah. false start, I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to take a knee. No, he still ran it. But then, uh, again, like throughout the whole game, like once Baylor got inside the red zone, like all, all they did was run it, it seemed like. Yeah. Like Bryce Petty had yeah. two rushing touchdowns, was it? Yep. The, run, the running back I just, had a couple. Yep, I just, I just don't like the the non-kneel. So just real quick guys before we go to break, any takeaways from this game, good or bad? Um, I, I feel like it was, I guess the good takeaway would be it somewhat prepares them for another high-powered offense yep. this, next, this Saturday against Oklahoma State. Yep. And they, they got like first-hand experience on what it's like to play an offense of that caliber. 
Yep. That's, that's what I would say. I would say it's like a mini, you know, yeah. almost like a Baylor team, just a little less Oklahoma State. is yeah. not, not taking any credit away. I think the only thing I would say really improved on was a running game from their game last year to this year. Um, they only got 41 yards on 33 carries last year, and then this year they ran for 120 seven yards on 34 carries and then just they had a couple more total yards converted a couple more third downs but obviously the same the result was the same so do you have any good or bad takeaways um i like that we did take some shots down the field with yep. sammy he i mean he missed on several that could have been huge plays i mean uh, if he made those plays it could it could have been a different story right, it really could right. have been yeah with their man pressure we did pretty well wide receivers were open i mean yep. he just didn't make some throws and as far as obviously sam ran the ball really well in that yep. game all right, so we're going to take a quick break, and after the break, we're going to preview a little Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and see if Iowa State can come away with a victory in Stillwater. Ever wonder what makes us, the Smurfs, so happy? The forest, of course. This is where we, along with the beautiful forest creatures, make our home with beautiful plant life, clean water, and endless adventures. Day. It's a place to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. So discover the forest with your family today. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the forest near you. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Welcome back to Insiders alongside Jake Stevens and Alex Krausto. I'm Alan Fidelke. So before the break, we kind of recap the Iowa State Baylor loss. So that's, that's done and over with, guys. Let's, let's fast forward to this Saturday. Iowa State is heading down to Stillwater, where um, they are 0-3 in Stillwater the last 10 years, and they're 2-5 and against Oki State, you know, uh, in the last 10 seasons as well. So real quick, guys, let's just look at Oklahoma State. What does this team do well that you have noticed? I mean, they're 3-1, they're and one, and their one loss came at the very beginning of the season to the number one ranked team in the nation, Florida State, chop nation, essentially. So, Jake, we'll start with you. What, what stands out for you about this Oklahoma State team? I think Oklahoma State, I think they throw the deep ball extremely well. Oh, my gosh, yes. Like, they have five receivers averaging 20 yards a reception with at least five receptions on, on the season. They like to spread the ball out, and you really can't double or cover one guy or focus on one guy. They like to spread the ball out to all those receivers. Yep. And with that deep ball, with Iowa State's undersized cornerbacks, that's, that's really going to be a problem. So we're going to have to see how that goes. But, you know, Alex, what, what do you like about this Oklahoma State team? Um, yeah, what they've been saying is they're a little one-dimensional as far as obviously they have very good wide receiving core. They throw the ball really well. Um, they are returning their running back that put up a heck of a game against us last year. Desmond Rowland. Yes. Yeah. Um, but as far as that goes, we'll, we'll see uh, how one-dimensional they are. Yeah, I like, I, I, they have a quarterback in, in Dax Garman who can sling it. I think he slings it better than Bryce Petty, especially the deep ball. And uh, like we talked about, uh, Desmond Rowland, he gets a bulk of the carries. But Tyreek Hill, he averages the most yards per carry on the team at six yards. At 29 carries, 174 yards. He's kind of more of a receiver, yeah, kind of like a Jarvis Rest. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think of him as a KD Cannon of Baylor, only faster. I touched on how fast KD Cannon was on our last on our last show. He runs a, you know, Cannon ran a 
in a 100 meter dash. Tyreek Hill ran a 10.19. That was tied for the fastest time in the, U in, in the United States. So that's pretty fast. And if you look at his 200, it's even better. He ran a 20.14. That uh, was the second fastest high school mark of all time. That's, that's where it's at right now. And it, to put that into perspective, that would have been the fastest college time last year, and it would have placed him six at the Olympics in London. So he's pretty fast. So if he gets an open lane, I mean, he has no touchdowns this year, but if he gets an open lane against Iowa State, he, 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 he might as well chalk, chalk it up for a touchdown because there's no one on the Iowa State defense that can catch him that fast. So that, that's kind of the two, thing, the two main guys. Look for them to hook up, I think, especially if they throw it out to uh, – Throw it out to Tyreek Hill in the flat. Kind of get him in open space, a little shake. Kind of like a, kind of like what we try to do with Jarvis. Try to get him in open space. Let him do his thing. So, real quick, guys, to end the show, we're gonna play a little, you know, you know, game of what if. So we'll start with you, Alex. Oki State wins the game if our cornerbacks don't perform. It's simple as that. If we can't control, if our secondary is not good, they're just gonna they're gonna own us. Jake, same it's same thing for you. Oki State wins same. if yeah, same. Oki State wins if they can throw the ball as stellar as they've thrown it all season. I mean, they're averaging 40 points per game. I think they've got that every game, except for Florida State, they got 31. But yeah, if, if they continue to throw that ball, I think they'll win. I, you know, I agree with you guys. I'm not gonna touch on it more than you guys have. But another thing, I think they need to, Iowa State's game right now, because they lack a running game. Their, their big part of their offense is Sam Richardson throwing the ball. So I think Oki State wins the game if they limit Iowa State through the air. If you look at their two big games that they played that weren't um, chump teams essentially against Texas Tech and Florida State at the beginning, they allowed close to 400 yards through the air for both teams. Yeah. So, and like I said, that's Iowa State's offense. So another thing, Oki State limit, limit the turnovers, um, especially against Florida State and Texas Tech. Their two biggest games so far this year, uh, they turned the ball over twice. So if they limit turnovers and limit Iowa State through the air, Okie State will probably come away with a victory. So another quick question about a game of what if. We'll start with you, Jake, this time. Iowa State wins a game if? I think Iowa State wins if they can pressure Dex Garmin. Okay. I mean, um, Oklahoma State, they have a somewhat inexperienced Offensive and, line. Yeah, young line on the right side. Yep. They have like two sophomores and like a redshirt freshman on yeah. the right, like the center, I believe. And plus, uh, I think they went up. They can play like a solid cover two. Because I think you have to leave two safeties back there with that oh, over, over the top yeah. with Max Garmin. Yeah, you totally. You leave two safeties, but then you also run the risk of if you blitz, then you leave it open the pass game. So yeah, you got to pick the poison. Hopefully the defense come up with something. And hopefully Iowa State's line can get to him and Drake, you know, Drake Furch, Corey Morrissey off the end. Um, Iowa State's coming up, you know, they came away with sacks against Iowa pretty well. And so hopefully they can get a rush on him, maybe set them behind the chains. You know, it sets them up for an obvious pass situation, but hopefully yeah. in those, when they're behind the chains, they can, Iowa State can keep everything in front and hopefully force some, you know, some three and outs or some punts. So same thing to you, Alex. Iowa State wins a game if. If the bend don't break, defense performs well. That's okay. how they win. Go to uh, little Wally Burnham. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Desmond Rowan had four TDs and 219 yards yeah. on the ground last year against us. Yep. And they have the so-called one-dimensional throwing attack that they have. So if our defense shows up, plays pretty well, and like you said, if, if they can't handle Sam Richardson and our new Mark Mangino offense, then we're going to do pretty well, I think. I'm going to say Iowa State wins the game if they air it out. They have to. Out. That's yeah. their offense. It, it, what I, they need to stop trying to establish this run game. They need to go what with you know with what works with them. They try to establish that run game early, and it, all of a sudden they get in a hole, and then they have to pass. They get in obvious pass situations. That's when you see Iowa State's offense really shine. So I think they have to air it out, and if they have success, that I think that'll set up the run because Oki State will empty the box to try to cover those you know those um, you know five wide receiver sets. Sam Richardson can go on a little quarterback draw. You see he can run. Rhodes credited him. He's faster than you think he is. So, and then a couple other things. I think they need to create turnovers. Um, I'll probably say at least two, probably. They, they forced three against Oklahoma State last year, and, but they didn't capitalize on them. That was the only bad thing. Um, and I touch on it every show. It seems like they need to win the third down conversion <laughs> battle. Both, they were both awful last year. Oklahoma State, 3 of 12 on third down conversion. So if you look at that, you think Iowa State has a chance. Well, you look at Iowa State, they went 4, and to, four, for to, or, yeah. excuse me, four of 20. So I think turnovers, they got to air it out. They got to win the third down conversion. And then I think the third down conversion kind of rolls into time of possession. Iowa State needs to keep, kind of like what they were trying to do against Baylor, they need to keep Dax Garman off the field. Uh, to keep that, you know, time of possession, which they controlled last year. They won the time of possession by over five minutes last year, so they seem to keep them off of the field. So 
I brought that little, uh, in the game of what if back, because last time we did it, Jake, if you remember, it was against Iowa, and that's been our only one, one yeah. win of the year. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works this time. So yeah. um, real quick, guys, before we end the show, what are your predictions for Saturday afternoon's matchup? Jake, we'll start with you. I feel like if this game wasn't Jack Trice, I, I would take Iowa State, just come, coming off the game against Baylor. But since it is in Stillwater, I think I'm going to take Oklahoma State. I think it's going to be a close one. I'm going to go 31-27, Oklahoma State. Okay, Alex, are you, are you riding the Oklahoma State bandwagon? I am, I am. Okay. Yeah, I don't think our defense is quite ready for another one like that. Uh, I'm going to go 35-21, Oklahoma State. Okay. Um, I know every show I picked Iowa State. And um, it's because I think they could have won every game that they have played so far, except uh, Baylor. I kind of stretched a little bit. You know, when I read stats, I think they might have a chance. So um, I'm still going to stick with Iowa State. They're, they're better than what, they, than what they are. Their one win is on the road. If you think about it, they have a good Big 12 victory. You know, on the road each year, last year was that comfort behind victory at West Virginia. year before that was it at Texas Tech against a ranked Texas Tech, that is, of the Red Raiders. So I have Iowa State 27 uh, to 24, and I think Jarvis West will have either a punt return or a kick return for a touchdown. That's going to give Iowa State that, that victory. It's not going to be a game-winning one, but it's going to be like he had against Texas Tech two years ago. So Iowa State 27-24, and you both have Oklahoma State? 37-21. So what was yours? 35-21. 35-21. All right. Well, we'll see, and join us next week uh, for another edition of Cyclone Insiders. We will recap this uh, Iowa State Oklahoma State game, and then we'll preview the homecoming game against Toledo. So have a great night, Ames.